We're going to get a 3D character model out of Mixamo, which is an awesome free resource that Adobe recently acquired. And I believe it's free. I don't think you have to have an Adobe account, but you do have to register within Mixamo. So I'll just jump right into Browse the Animations. And the way it's set up is there's a character menu where you can choose from all these awesome different models. In this example, we're going to be using Eli. So you can click that and it'll load the character over here. And then switching over to the animations tab, you can choose from any of these pre-made animations. And in our case, we're going to use a flying animation. So we can just search for fly up here. And this flying right here is what we want. And you can see <laughs> he flew right off the screen so we can turn in place on. And now the animation's still there, but he's not moving forward at all, which is what we want. And you can single click and drag to rotate the camera around, middle click to pan, and right click and drag to zoom. And you can see this animation is seamless. As it ends, you'll notice there's no hiccups or jumps. So we want to stick with this 80 total frames right here, because I think if we trim it, it'll kind of jump from the end to the beginning. And just like that, we already have our model all set up. So now we can just download it and we'll grab the FBX. The frame rate we can set to 24 just so we minimize the total number of animation keyframes. We do want the skin and keyframe reduction. We could do it in here, but I think I'm gonna do it in Cinema 4D. So I'll leave that to none. And then just click download. Now in Cinema 4D, I'm just gonna drag in this FBX. So it looks like the animation came in just fine. You can see the whole skeleton is there. And you can see up here, all the joints are in this joint hierarchy. Now, if we click on our model and under mode, go to project info, you'll see there's about 8,000 polygons and the memory it's taking up is 2.73 megabytes, which is a little steep. But you'll also notice there's all these UV tags. And if I shift double click any of these, it shows a little preview. You can see that it looks like all of these are actually exactly the same. Yeah, I think they're all identical. So we should be able to shift click and select all these and delete. It looks like that didn't interfere with our UVs. Now I'll check the project info again. And now our memory footprint went from 2 point something megabytes to 550 kilobytes. So all those UV tags were taking up a lot of space because if you look at them, each of these little points is on this two axis plane. And so it has to basically save all this information, which doesn't seem like it would be that much. But when you have five or six extra tags on there, it quickly adds up. So deleting that already saved us a ton of space. Now to see this material in full res, at least how it'll look in Spark, we can select this material here, go to viewport, and you can see everything is grayed out, which probably means we're in a take, an animation take that would have, you know, separate animation than what it's default. So over in the takes tab, you can see we're in this mixmo.com take. Let's see what is in take one. So take one is static and the main one is also static. But once we switched over to main, we get all this back. When we're in the take, everything is grayed out and we would have to right click and override anything we want to change. So let's just go back to main for now. That way we can change the resolution of this texture, just change it to 1K. Now I know this is what we would see in Spark. So pretty good resolution really. And all of that is just on this 1K map. So because we do want all this animation to be baked in no matter what, we don't necessarily need separate takes. So let's activate this Mixamo take. And just to get rid of all this extra stuff, with it selected, we can go up here. It says string not found in this menu, but I think this is probably just like a file menu or something. I don't know why that's bugging out. But if we go down to current take to new document, that, that happened really quick. But what it basically did is took that one take and made that the parent and deleted everything else. So I think now we might have a new file and this is now just like the default. So if we press play, this animation is there 
and we don't have any separate takes to worry about. So I'll just rename this to flying and go back to the object tab. Now we're almost done here, but there's one thing we need to do. We're not going to be using this character's head because obviously we want our own face in there. So I'm going to select this model, go to polygon mode. And when I switch to this mode, it defaults to the actual default mesh and none of the skin. So that's why it hopped up here. And hopefully we can just double click the head and it'll select everything. But if it's all connected, it might just select everything. All right, well, it does look like this is a separate model, so we can just double click that and delete. And then obviously delete these eyeballs as well. And I'm just hitting the zero key to go to rectangular selection mode. And thankfully it's nice and clean and closed here, so there's no weird polygons or artifacts in there. So now when we go back to model mode, it snaps back. And hopefully the animation stays intact. And you can hold Alt and click this twice to turn these red to hide that. So now you can just see the model without the skeleton. So if we want to move this down to the origin, it's often not great to have an object just like floating off of the origin if we don't need it to. We can select this parent joint and we see it is keyed already so we can't just move it. So in cinema hitting Option or Alt, Shift and F3 will bring up this timeline. And we just want to affect the hips here so we can twirl this down and select position Y, which is the up and down axis. And zooming out, we can see the keys are around 90 up here. But if I just select all of these, click, drag down, and hold shift to make sure it doesn't go left and right at all. And I can just put this right at zero. So you can see zeros here, and I just kind of put it around that area. And the animation is still intact, but now the model's basically zeroed out, so it's not way up here anymore. So we can close the timeline, and I think we're ready to export. So I'll save the scene first, and then we could make a null and put everything in it, or we could just go to File, Export, FBX, and this will grab the whole scene. Unless you have a selection only checked, which I guess isn't possible when you maybe go through this setting. We do want to make sure we get all these checked correctly. So we do want normals. Under animation, we do need tracks enabled. We don't need to bake all frames because I think everything is already fully keyed out. And because we created a new document from that one take earlier, we don't need to worry about this at all. And under materials, the default Fong Lambert is fine. And we don't want to embed the textures. We'll have those separate so we can compress them better. And that should be everything. So we can hit OK and then save it wherever you want. So now in a new Spark AR scene, we can drag in our FBX that we exported. And to save some time, you can just drop it right in the viewport. And that will import it into assets and also drop it into our scene hierarchy. And you can see, even though we didn't embed the textures, it knew where the textures were located, and so it brought those in. And if we twirl this down, you can see all of those were brought in here. And selecting all of these, we can see it's 4 megabytes, so these are a little too big. But it looks like after Spark compressed them, they're about a megabyte. It looks like older Android is still really high, so we might need to manually change these a little bit. So let's just do it for all of them. For iOS, I'm just going to go to JPEG, maximum size, medium quality, and the best method. So now we're sitting at about 550 kilobytes. So we went from about 4 megabytes to 500 kilobytes, so that's pretty great. If we want to double check the file size of everything, we can just open the asset summary. And we're not even at 1 megabyte, so this is pretty good so far. We didn't have to do too much cleanup on this model to minimize the file size, so that's really nice. Now if we hit play pause, you notice there's no animation, so let's click on the model. And then under animation over here, it says no controller selected. So let's drop this down and create a new one. And by default, it knows to grab this Cinema 4D flying kind of animation object. 
you can see up here there's some details about the animation. So just like that, it took the animation in there and applied it to this skeleton, which if we twirl down, you can right click and expand all to quickly view it. All these little joints all have their own animations that you can see over here. And if you're really trying to trim out any of the extra file size, you could probably delete a lot of the fingers and hands, because at least in the joints, because if you look in close, you know, we have all these joints, the fingers are kind of curled in and looks like they might not actually be animated. So they're not taking up too much space, but you could probably delete those and just have fewer objects and a little lighter file size. But in our case, everything was pretty lightweight already. So I didn't bother doing that. So up next, we're going to control this looping animation with your face just a little bit.